I'm using watercolor paper and jelly gouache paint and I'm starting with the center shape of the bow. It's not necessarily a triangle, um, but it kind of has like this kind of curved element to it. And basically all of the shapes are really similar. So they're, they're not quite triangles because they don't come to a point at the end. Instead, they have more of a flat end, but they kind of go out like triangles. So I'm working as I would just like a flower kind of going around the center with like what you would call petals, I guess. Um, but instead, I am making these little sections of a bow. And if you have a bow handy, it's better to look at the real thing and then you can kind of just draw what you see. Um, but I'm going from memory. I actually drew a bow yesterday, so I'm kind of remembering how I did that and am drawing this one. So I start out from the middle and work my way out until I decide my bow is full enough, that it has enough sections, and all the sections are pretty similar in shape and size. I'm using blue because I am going to be making my bow blue, so I thought I would just draw with the same color. All right, time to shade. So on each of my little sections, I'm going for three values. So a light, a medium, and a dark. And the highlight, the lightest part, is towards the middle in most of the shapes. And then the darks are usually along the edges of the shapes. So I started with a white in the middle. I went for a regular blue right next to the white, and now you can see I'm adding in the dark blue. I'm trying to add the each of the shades while the other ones are still wet because then the shades can blend together better. And then also towards the center of the bow, I'm adding an extra little dark section um, because there's areas of the bow that are shaded in really dark. So you'll kind of see as I go around, I'll be adding some of those in there. The very center of the bow is not quite as light as some of the other areas because it does not see as much of the light so I'm starting off with a medium blue I will still add a highlight in it um, and I'm trying to make the highlight go a little bit of a different direction so you can tell it's a different section of the bow and then now I'm filling in some of the really dark area and I will actually go in and make this darker later so you can kind of experiment on these. You can say, okay, do I want to start light and then go medium and then go dark? This one I'm starting dark and then I'll add the medium and the light. You can kind of switch back and forth between them um, and see which one works best for you. It's kind of fun to experiment and say, okay, which, which one of these methods is the best way to get my three values? Notice I'm not even doing the light value, but while I've got the medium and the dark on my brush, I thought I'd jump to another section too, and yet a third section, and maybe try to do a couple of them at the same time, instead of constantly switching the value on my brush. So I'm doing kind of the medium blue. You can see I'm using a round brush. I think this is like a size, I don't know, maybe four round brush. I like it because it comes to a nice point so I can get kind of those details in. And now I'm going to go back in and add the highlights to all three sections. Since I was doing three at the same time. Now this is also an excellent uh, exercise to do even just with a pencil to see if you can get those values shaded. The, the light, the medium, and the dark. Going ahead and adding my light values on my third little section that I was working on. Sometimes you can see there are two areas of highlight, so I'm trying to do that on a couple of them where they're maybe catching a little bit of light from two different directions. So I was adding a little bit of light section on two spots with a little dark down the middle of the two. Right, I'm 
trying to get the light and the medium on my next section here, filling that in. I'm trying to also make sure that my brush is wet enough with paint because I do want the paint to be nice and smooth um, and nice and wet so that the blending works better. So I'm really making sure each time I go in to grab some water even and some paint to get it to have nice smooth coverage on my bow. So I kind of like doing a couple different sections at once. So I added the medium. Now I'm going back in with the light, the highlight. And because that paint is still wet, it blends very nicely together. So it's a gradual change from light to dark. Now I have not done the super dark shade yet. I am kind of saving that for the end because there are a lot of those um, sections that are in shadow kind of in the center parts of the bow um, and I want to add those in with the dark too. So right now I'm really trying to, to focus on my medium and my light shades and then I will be gradually adding in some dark as well. Do you use these kind of bows when you wrap presents? My kids love these things, but I don't tend to use them very often because it's hard to stack presents when they all have bows on them. So I've been a little bit lazy over the years just wrapping them in paper and leaving them be. But every once in a while, I'll stick a bow on top of a couple and the kids get a big kick out of that. I also like using ribbon. We've got this giant thing of ribbon someone gave us. so. I like to tie the ribbons on the pages or the presents as well. All right, you can see with the last couple sections, I'm getting the mediums and the light values on there so that my bow looks like it has form, it pops out. And then I'm still saving the darkest darks for the end. Now that some of the sections are dry, I can go back in and really push some of my highlights. So the white won't kind of blend in quite as much, it'll stand on its own. And I do want my highlights to be nice and bright. So I'm going back in over some of my shapes that I've already done and I'm just trying to make some of the values a little bit bolder. Clean up some of my lines that just kind of got smeared making it look nice and neat. All right, now I'm going in and, and getting to some of those darks that I've been putting off. So my darks are along the edges of each of the shapes. So I'm kind of going in with my darker blue here and making sure that those darks are, are nice and defined. Um, I'm also doing the very end of the shape to the outside edge with a little bit of dark as well. Um, this really makes the lights pop. So to have that contrast of light and dark 
is really important to make your bow have look like it has form, look like it, it pops off the page. Otherwise it, it looks too flat. So I'm really trying to kind of push my nice dark tones so that my lights can um, stand on their own and, and pull push forward towards the viewer's eye. At this point, I'm adding the finishing touches to my bow. I'm making sure that all of my shapes are well defined and especially by adding kind of the darks along the edges. And then now I also want to focus too on the shadow part that's in the inside of the bow um, underneath all these shapes. So I'm going to do that by focusing on the area of the shapes that are, are angled towards the center of the bow and I'm going to be adding some nice darks into those areas. So going in with a nice dark blue and um, adding kind of a curved line towards the bottom of each of these shapes or the center of each of these shapes angled in towards the middle of the bow and that's that shaded area that's on the inside part of the bow that you can't see. Adding those darks in there really makes the bow pop. It really makes it come to life and look like a 3D bow instead of a flat bow. So I'm really focusing on those nice dark darks along the center parts of each of these shapes. I don't usually like to go solid black with my darks because it can be kind of dull. Um, instead, I like to use either a very dark blue or sometimes I'll mix like a blue with a red to get kind of a purple for my darks, something similar to that. So I have a couple other lines I'm just gonna clean up and then I will call this piece a masterpiece. So I hope you enjoyed this exercise. It's such a great way to develop your skills in value and in color blending, um, making sure that you have enough contrast with light, lights and darks. And of course, this is a very festive, um, fun painting to paint. So. I hope you enjoyed this and thank you so much for watching these tutorials. If you are liking them, please subscribe to my channel down below so that you can see when I put more up on my channel, Elkie Art. Take care and have a wonderful day. Thanks guys.